First things first, we always want to be put into the anatomical position. Now, if you, didn't, if you don't remember what anatomical position is, then go back to the other video that I talked about. It's really cool. I spent a lot of time on that video, so check that out. A lot of basics and good understanding there. Um, every video is adding on to each other, so if you don't understand some terminologies, just check back to previous videos in this kinesiology series so um, you can learn more about that. What's up, you guys? My name is Dr. Lift for Change, Justin Lee, physical therapist. I help PT students become high performers and help students get accepted into to PT school. So if any of that resonates with you, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss a video when it drops. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go over the three planes of motion. There are three planes, some people say four, I'll talk about the fourth, but we're gonna mostly be focusing on three. Now the first plane of motion is gonna be the sagittal plane. Now sagittal plane means a plane where it's, uh, you, it cuts the body to the left and to the right. So any motion that occurs in this plane, right? Um, so in this plane of motion, let's see, sagittal plane. <clears throat> so I always think about planes kind of like walls, right? So in the sagittal plane, I always like to think about how there are walls or chairs next to me. I can't move in this direction because I'll be hitting the wall or the chair, right? So if I bring myself down here, I can't do any lateral raises because the chair or well, the wall will hit me. So the only types of movements that can occur here are forward and backward movements or what we call flexion and extension type of movements, right? Okay, you follow me here? So when you see shoulder flexion exercise, right, or front raises, that's in the sagittal plane. Or if you see any type of hip flexion movement or squats, right? That's typically in the sagittal plane. Pretty cool, right? Now what's really interesting and what you have to understand is that in every single plane of motion, you always have a bisecting axis of rotation. Now there's always this rule, whatever plane that you're talking about, the axis of rotation will always be perpendicular to that plane. So for example, if we are in the sagittal plane, then perpendicular to that is medial lateral, right? So the axis that bisects or that goes through the sagittal plane is what we call the medial lateral axis. Cool? Okay, next we have the frontal plane. Now, the sagittal plane divided us forward, or it went right through the middle, so it divided us left and right. Now the frontal plane will divide us into front and back. Now just watch me here y'all. I'm just going to turn my body because I can't turn the camera. And you can see how now the wall is in front of me, not to the side of me. Follow me? So what was once a shoulder flexion exercise that I was able to do, now I can't. But now I can do lateral raises. Follow me here? So in the frontal plane, the movements that occur are different than in the sagittal plane. So exercises like, um, exercises like lateral raises, if I want to do hip abduction, right? Or any clamshell exercise, or clamshell is kind of like in the transverse plane, but um, you know, hip abduction exercises, if I want to do lateral lunges, things like that, that's gonna help us uh, stay in the frontal plane. And the axis of rotation, if the frontal plane is bisecting us this way, then the axis has to come this way, right? Inter, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, perpendicular. So that's gonna be the anterior posterior axis. Cool? Okay, now lastly, I promised you three planes of motion. We had the sagittal, the frontal, and now lastly, we have the transverse. Now the transverse plane is going to bisect us from top to bottom. So a lot of times you'll hear a transverse cut, right, through the body. And that'll divide me into the upper part of the body and lower part of the body. So if you want to think about if the wall was on top and bottom, right, then everything here is fair game. So movements that occur in this transverse plane. So you might be seeing like wood chops, right? 
You might be seeing, like we talked about earlier, the clamshell exercise. So all those are going to be working in the transverse plane. And the axis that cuts through is going to be the vertical axis, or also known as the longitudinal axis. Oh. Ah, guys, so plane of motion is something that I think will really benefit you in the long run. You think sagittal plane, frontal plane, whatever, all that stuff is so boring, it's fundamental, which is definitely true. But in the long run, when you become a physical therapist or an expert in movement, which I hope you are aspiring to be, especially if you're watching this, you're probably a kinesiology major. So you're getting educated in human movement and you're gonna be way more knowledgeable than your average person. Now lastly, I know I promised you that there are four different types of movements, right? Movement planes. The last one is called the oblique, um, the oblique plane of motion. It's basically just a triplanar way. So basically not in any front side or transverse, it's kind of in the diagonal. It's just that in that plane of motion, it just gets way more complicated. But the main three planes of motion are gonna be your sagittal, your frontal, and your horizontal plane. All right guys, so I hope this video helped inspire you to have a better conceptual understanding of human movement and the, different, the three different planes of motion that movement can occur. In our next video, we're gonna be talking more about fundamental movement and moving, what types of movement actually happens in those different types of planes of motion. And this is where the fun begins because now we can start looking at different exercises and see how, what movements are replicated in what normal gym exercises, like your squat, your deadlift, your lat pull down, your chest press, all of that type of stuff. This is something I'm super passionate about and can't wait to share with you all. So if you have anything, any questions like that, please feel free to comment below. And if you like the content like this, please feel free to like this video and subscribe and hit those notifications so you don't miss a video when it drops. Lastly, you guys, I do have an online course to help you get into and accept it in physical therapy school. Like I mentioned, I am a physical therapist and I help students, PT students, become high performers and get accepted into physical therapy school. So I do have an online course that teaches you everything you need to know to get accepted, to give you the tips and the strategies to look ahead so that you can boost your application and help you stand out so that the schools will be able to see you and ultimately accept you. So I hope to see you in class. Please uh, feel free to check that link out. It is in the description below as well. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. Stay lifting, stay aloha, God bless. Have a great one, you guys.